Hello and thanks for joining me for some more landscape photography. Today I'm just doing a very quick follow-up processing video on an image that I captured the last time we were out when we were at the Slate Quarry in Dinorwig in Snowdonia. Before we get into the processing, let's just very quickly remind ourselves of how the image was captured. The complication for this is the exposure. I'm shooting it at 14 millimeters because I really want that framing for the tree and I want to capture the beautiful moss that's on these branches as they all lead the eye through to the scene in the distance. So what that's meant is I've had to shoot it at a whole series of exposure values to make sure I've got enough to work with in post. So uh, I've shot it all manually. I don't bracket when I'm on a tripod because I can be more cerebral about it. Uh, but I've overexposed quite dramatically so that the dark branches, which to the, to the eye are almost silhouettes, but they are catching some side light and I want to pick out some of those details in the moss in post-production. Um, and then of course, contrary to the tree, the background sky, even though it's a grim grey day, is really bright. Then I've had to dial the exposure right down so that I don't overexpose the sky. And of course, what that means is that the tree itself then and the leaves and the branches above at the top end of the frame are pretty much silhouettes. And I don't want that either because the light being reflected or diffused, I should say, through the clouds is sort of backlighting some of these leaves. And I want that effect in the final image. So it's going to be a complicated bit of processing. Um, in fact, it might even warrant a processing video. Don't do those very often, but if that's something you'd like to see, of course, I don't know how this image is going to turn out. So if I stick it up at the end and it's pants, I won't be demonstrating how I processed it. But nevertheless, well, I'm reasonably confident that, you know, I kind of know what I'm doing these days. Now, in the end, I was quite happy with the finished result and you may have seen it in the previous video. Overall, it took me about 30 minutes to process and bringing the exposures together. Once you've got a bit of experience, really doesn't take very long at all. So let me show you how it's done. Now, I'm going to take it as red that you completely understand how to work with layers in Photoshop. Uh, and don't forget, you do need to make sure they're aligned before you start working on them. So go to Auto Align Layers and just run that process. Now, as you can see, I've got the brightest exposure at the top running down to the darkest at the bottom. And that's just the way I like to work with it. It doesn't matter which order you have them in. I just find that by always doing it the same way, whichever you choose, just makes it easier in the long run. So with this top layer, which at the moment is all you can see, is very highly exposed and there's very little that I'm going to be using from this layer at all. I'm going to add a layer mask to this layer and it's a white mask, which means the entire layer is visible and I want to hide most of this layer. So I'm going to use Command I. And any time I say Command during the course of this video, if you're on a Windows machine, that means Control. Command I is going to invert the mask. And what that means is the mask is now black, indicating that none of the data on that layer is visible. All we're looking at now is this layer underneath it. So what I want to do is to just show very small amounts of this uh, highly exposed layer. The rest of it is no use to me at all. So I'm going to paint white onto this mask with a standard paintbrush tool. Click B for the paintbrush. I'm going to need a smaller brush than that. So I use my square bracket to reduce the size. And over here in the uh, palette tool, click X to swap them round. So I'm now painting with white on a black background. And what I want to do with this is I just want to make these bits of the branches visible. Can you see how that's just showing the brighter exposure from the top layer. And when I actually processed this for real, because this is just me demonstrating it to you, I took a great deal more time over it, as you can imagine, and picked out some of the shadow areas up here as well. If I option click onto the mask, you can see it. That's all I'm going to need from the top layer. The rest of it is no use to me at all. 
what we have there is a quick demonstration of how masks work before we get on to the advances of luminosity masking. Now, let's just quickly talk about how else we can affect the mask that we're using. What I'm going to do is select the middle layer and we're going to make a selection on the middle layer. I'm going to pop over to the selection tool quick selection tool. I'm just going to drag into this sky area because it's that chunk of sky and a bit of the quarry background that I want from the bottom dark exposure. Now you can see there's these marching ants and the selection is just this slab of sky in the middle. And what selections allow you to do is if you add a mask, the selection is automatically applied to the mask. So what this has done is it's only showing me that white area from this layer and it's hiding everything else. Well, now that's completely the opposite to what we want. So I'm going to use command I to completely invert the mask. And now on this brighter layer, the sky is hidden and it's only showing me everything around it. Now, of course, that's no use to us at all because the sky is really complicated and we want that darker background layer showing through all of those leaves. And so painting it manually or making manual selections would take forever. And that's where luminosity masks come in. Now, a luminosity mask is based entirely on how bright or dark the pixels are. Nothing to do with color at all and Photoshop will automatically generate it for you, taking the data from the image. I'll show you how it's done. Let's just start by getting rid of that mask because that's no use to us at all. What we're going to do is we're going to go into our channels panel. And if your channels panel isn't visible, just go up to window and select it from the list. Now, as you probably know, all digital imagery is based on a combination of red, green and blue pixels. And all the channels do in Photoshop are reflect the pixel capture from your camera. And the top layer here, the RGB, is the combination of those three channels. So what we're going to do to create our luminosity mask is simply click holding the command key. So command click on the RGB channel and it's created a selection for us. Now you're probably wondering, well, what has it selected? How does it know where to put the marching ants? It's very simple. What it's done is it's selected exactly halfway between the darkest darks and the whitest whites. So it's 50%. However, even though the marching ants appear to describe outlines on the image, the mask that it's gonna create is a gradient. And it, and it runs out from 50% out to full white and full dark. Let me show you. We go back to our layers. You can see we have our selection still running. And as I showed you earlier, if we create a mask, it will use that selection for the mask. So we'll just add the mask. And we've now created a very, very complicated mask. I'm going to option click to show you. And what this is doing is it's from this layer, masking the dark trees and showing the sky and the, and the gray areas are sort of partially showing through. And that's exactly the opposite to what we want. What we want for this layer is to hide the sky so it's showing through from the dark layer underneath. So command I to invert the mask. And now it looks just like the sort of photo negatives that you might remember from back in the days of film. Or if you still use film, you'll be quite familiar with this sort of thing. And what this mask is doing is on this layer, it's showing me the brighter trees and it's partially showing the foreground. But the sky and all these little complicated little areas is being pretty much masked out completely from this layer and showing me the darker sky from underneath. If I click on that, you can see if I just toggle this layer on and off, you see how the it shows the highlights more so the sky is uh, not so overexposed. Now that's all well and good, but what if we don't want to select it at 50%? How do we nudge the mask in other directions? That's really easy too. What I'll do is we'll go back to this 
mask we'll delete it back to our channels and remember command click on the RGB that creates the marching ants but what we want is to change what's being selected and what we're going to do is we're going to do shift command click again on that same layer and can you see how the marching ants have changed we'll do it one more time now what's going on there well you remember that the first click is at 50 percent well the next click is intersecting that at another 50 percent of what it's selected the third one is another 50% of that. So we're nudging the mask towards a more extreme state. We create a mask using that selection. Let's look at the mask again. Now, as you can see, that's going to be showing us almost all of this and next to nothing of the layer underneath because not much is masked out. But what if we reverse it again? Command I. And now what we have is pretty much the mask that I actually used when I was processing this image. And that's the result of that mask. As you can see, it's a much more subtle blend, but it does retain the nice dark sky in the background, but not enough to make it look overtly HDR. One last thing that I did do with this is on that mask, if I just option click onto it, I did do some extra painting. I'm going to paint with the black brush this time and quite a large brush. What I did was I just masked all of this out. And the reason for that is I wanted to work with the slightly brighter middle layer of this overall image because if I used a darker and then brightened it up because it's micro four thirds, I run the risk of introducing noise. And that's the finished effect of the masking. To all intents and purposes, this image is now blended and I can proceed with the additional processing that I do. And so what you can do now is carry on processing it in Photoshop or save the file back into Lightroom. Now, do bear in mind that as opposed to how many of these processing videos start with a raw file and oh, let's drop the highlights and raise the shadows and all that sort of thing. We've now done the exposure blend. There's very little necessary. And all I did to finish off this image was some really subtle noise reduction just around the middle area where the cloud meets the top of the quarry. No need for any sharpening. The image is perfectly sharp as it is. Uh, but I did do quite a bit of dodging and burning down in the foreground and the midground. Also working with the colour slightly to emphasise the grassy areas uh, and the treetops on the line of oak trees that runs down to the vanishing point. And there you go. Luminosity masks, dead easy. Absolutely no mystique about them at all, but they're really, really helpful when you're blending exposures for landscape photography. So thank you ever so much for joining me. I really hope you found it interesting and helpful. And if you have, why not subscribe to the channel and join me next time? Cheers.